All right, all right, all right, all right. We are back with episode 30, Superhero Academy. It's James Taylor. <laughs> episode 30. So for me, that just means consistency on my part, but that's because, uh, you know, this is something that I actually enjoy doing. Once a week to hop on here and it becomes the blog and the podcast and everything that I'm thinking about for that week kind of wrapped up into one thing. So uh, this journey has been nice and thank you for if you've been tuning in. I appreciate you a lot. It means a lot to, to have some people listening in. Um, anyway, let's get let's get into it. So this episode to be or not to be that is the question. So let's get right into it. Actually, we're going to start with Hamlet, Act 3, Scene 1, William Shakespeare, 1564 to 1616. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against the sea of troubles, and by opposing in them, to die, to sleep, no more. And by a sleep to say we end, the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to, tis a consummation devoutly to be wished, to die, to sleep, to sleep perchance to dream. A, there's the rub, for in that sleep of death, what dreams may come? When we have shuffled off this mortal coil, must give us pause. That's there's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time, the oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely, the pangs of despised love, the laws delay, the insolence of office, and the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes? When he himself might his quietus make with a bare bakken, who would fardels bear? to grunt and sweat under a weary life, but that the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns, puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others we know not of. Thus conscious does make cowards of us all, and thus the native hue of resolution is sicklied o'er the pale cast of thought, and enterprises of great pith and moment with this regard, their currents turn awry and lose the name of action. Soft you now, the fair Ophelia, nymph in thy horizons, be all my sins remembered. So there it is. To be or not to be. That is the question. But that's when you're living in a physical existence. Hamlet questions the physical existence that we all suffer from. The ups and downs, the pains, the lack and delay of justice, the rich bricks, the heartaches of relationships, the seemingly endless sea of troubles. By questioning our very consciousness, we learn something. Would you rather be conscious or forever unconscious? Consciousness being in the mind means that we are just purely aware of what's happening around us and what happens to us is only a matter of being aware of this physical body and circumstance as all pain, especially the heartbreak we feel and heartache resides here and obviously here. And we're not going to go into chakras today. So the question of being the I am behind everything is the cause of all our pains, struggles, desires, and wants. To be or not to be is really a matter of what we choose to do with our consciousness. Awareness is a funny game because we are extremely partial to this physical existence that we live in and are used to. We don't understand that there is a separation of the mind and the physical. And that's why if you look up how our senses fool us in the Google box, you'll find a million articles on how your senses are fooling you. 
Our senses fool us because the sensory perception is filtered through our personal interpretation of the input received, what we see, hear, smell, taste, and touch. Each of us will individually interpret every single event that happens to all of us differently because of our entire life process and what the mind has encoded. Your mind will delete, distort, and I forget the other one. Delete, distort, and something else the mind does with information because of how much sensory information you're getting on a second-by-second -second basis. And because all of those senses are connected to nerves and synapses that are firing in the mind, we forget that that's just our brain's way of telling us what's happening around us, not actually to us. Because in this society, which is very comfortable, survival is really a matter of how much danger you have to surpass, right? Survival of the fittest. Living on to see another day, that's survival. But in a comfortable society, when you get to sit in front of this computer and watch a video, or listen to the podcast, or read it on the blog, um, it's not so much about making it to the next day, but about focusing on what it is that we want. We actually get the privilege of wanting, not needing. Needing shelter, needing food, needing clothes, needing to be warm, etc. The basic necessities of life. So we get to focus on what it is that we don't have. By saying that I want something, I'm saying that I don't have it. And hence the suffering that Hamlet speaks of. Because we rely on those feelings from those synapses to carry us after receiving that input from outside sources. So we move along through life with those feelings, trying to constantly amplify or minimize the feelings that we have, either feelings of bad or feelings of good. We do this with everything. However, you can bypass this. You can be that which you see in your mind, which you have in your dreams, by cultivating that feeling beforehand. So instead of receiving the input and letting the feeling come after the input, you can give yourself the input and cultivate the feeling and carry that with you. And that way you become this sort of beacon that the law of attraction can really work for. Because it's not really a law of attraction. You are being that. And by being that, the energy around you is what brings those things into your life, creates those things, creates the opportunity for those things to happen. There is no want or desire because you become that which you seek. This takes the pressure and the fight and all the stress out of the life that you've been living, the ones that Hamlet was talking about. However, this requires faith and belief. It requires you to not rely on this physical existence that you've known for so long for your feedback. Because the feedback, like we talk about feedback loops all the time, right, on your social media, the feedback from life is usually not going to tell you that things are going how you feel them to be. That's why you rely on yourself. This is, in a way, releasing yourself from the physical bondage of relying on the physical world to give you what you seek. That's the definition of true freedom. You're no longer a slave to the physical, the physical being the body that's giving you the input through those five simple, very simple senses that the brain uses to tell you what's going on. This is the truest way into health, wellness, wealth, and the life that you've dreamt of because it's to be or not to be. Because what we focus on and give attention to is exactly what will be created around us in the world. So if you focus on what you don't want, what you don't want is exactly what you'll get because that is what you focused on. That's what your attention, where our attention goes, energy flows. If you focus on what you do want, you will suffer 
Because in focusing on what you want, you're basically saying that you don't have it. You actually believe that you don't have it by saying that you want it. This is why you have to go out to the store to get something that you saw in your head that you wanted. But that's because you knew how to get it. With these other things that you're unaware of, this is why you have to be that. So the literal trick is being that which you seek to be. There is no need for wanting because you already have it. Because you are it. Life has a funny way of granting us those things which we like really internally desire and are unaware of. And it does it in completely perfect timing when we're least expecting it. That's life. And that's where the truest joys in life are, in the perfect timings and in the times when we're least expecting it. It's when we think that we found what we want and we go out looking for it that even if you were to get your hands on something like that, it quickly becomes something that you take for granted and lose. So B. The simple key is to use the I am in your day to day activities all the time. You should be thinking of what you are. I am in your mind and you don't need to say it. But focusing on what you are using the power of your mind, and this is what the power of your mind is for, is to visualize Visualize the scenery, and this is what Neville Goddard talks about. Visualizing the scenery, the smells, the sights. What is it like to be that which you seek? I myself have been using I am, and I've realized that my language has changed over time. It's no longer I am healthy or I am rich. Those things are... I'm so much more than that. And you'll start to realize that when you start using the words, you'll start to realize how little you think of yourself. You will find that the things that you desire are not the things that you desire at all. They're just things that pass. They come and go. It is you who becomes that which you seek. You become that. And by discovering yourself and I am, you can find out when you're frustrated, when you're angry, when you're upset, all these things that you are in the moment. And you can change those immediately to what you actually are, realizing that those are just fleeting feelings in the moment. And this is why the gratitude practice is so mind-blowingly successful in helping people live happier lives. Because being grateful is literally saying, I am grateful for what I have. It's truly a great mindset. So try using I am in your week this week and feel free to come back and, and leave comments, questions, all of it. I want to hear uh, from you on using the I am and creating that which you are. That's what the mind is for. To be or not to be. That is the question. Episode 30, Superhero Academy. It's your boy, James Taylor. And uh, man, have a great week. I'll catch you later.